Here's our third example of inverse trig. And this time we're going to do a definite integral when we have boundaries to plug in. So we're going from e to 1, and we have dx over x times the square root of 1 minus, and then we have natural log of x squared. So, at first glance, I think anybody at first glance would say, oh, that's going to be inverse secant, because you have an x out front, and then you have a radical. But when you look a little bit closer, you notice, well, in this one, the variable second and the number one comes first, and that does not follow the pattern of secant. That follows the pattern of the inverse sine. But we have this little funky thing out here. So we're going to go through the problem and clean it up anyway. And what we're going to find is through the cleanup process, you will see it uh, form perfectly into one of those one of those uh, little formula things. So uh, I mentioned in the last video, hopefully you're watching in order, that your first priority is to get a, a 1 in that formula. I already have a 1 in this um, radical, so I don't need to worry about factoring any number out. I'm already done there. So I can go straight to my u substitution step. So we always start with u squared because we always have squared variable in all three of our formulas. So u squared is going to be this natural log of x squared. And that means u is equal to just the natural log of x. Then we do du. Uh, so you got to reach into your calculus 1. Natural logs are funky. The derivative of a natural log is 1 over x dx. OK, so now I'm going to do my u substitution. So I need to know what dx is. I need to know what this x down here is. But what I want you to look at, look at what I have right here. I have 1 over x dx, which is also dx over x. I could write it like that. But that's exactly what you have sitting here in your expression. You have a dx on top, and you have an x on the bottom. And that's exactly what you have to substitute for. So that's already set up for you. So that whole expression. Uh, the 1 over x, which means an x in the denominator, and a dx in the numerator together is just du. So I have just du, that takes care of the dx over x, and that's it on the top. And then now I just have 1 minus u squared in the bottom. So after my u substitution, now this is simplified into a straight up inverse sine problem. There's not even any coefficients that we have to worry about out front. So it looked really messy in the beginning, but it turned out to be relatively basic. So the antiderivative is inverse sine of u. And um, now we need to replace u with our x's. So u is equal to the natural log of x. Only this time, we don't have plus c, because we do have boundaries. We were going from 1 to e. So we have to plug in e first. So sine negative 1 of the natural log of e, and then I'm going to subtract what I get when I do the sine negative 1 of the natural log of 1. Okay, both of those expressions from your pre-cal days, um, those are two expressions you need to know without a calculator. You need to know instantly by looking at it what the natural log of e is, and you need to know instantly what the natural log of 1 is. You don't want to fool with your calculator. So um, write these down, remind yourself to memorize them. They will come up repeatedly. So you're going to want to know them. The natural log of E is 1. The reason is ln natural log, it means log base E of E. And if you remember from pre-cal, a log is an exponent. So this is saying, what's the exponent that goes with E that gives me E? Well, the exponent would just be 1. So that's why the, nat the natural log of E is 1. Natural log of 1, again, that means log base e of 1. That one's saying, what's the exponent that goes with e that gives you 1? Well, the exponent is 0. Anything to the 0 power is how you end up with 1. So the natural log of 1 is 0. Okay, so I have sine negative 1 of 1 minus sine negative 1 of 0. So if you watch these videos in order, Remember, inverse is asking for the angle. It's, we know what the sine is. This is saying the sine is 1 or the sine is 0. I want to know where is the sine 1. What's the angle 
that gives me a sine of 1. So you're going to look at your unit circle, which really you shouldn't have to for 1s and zeros. The sine is the y coordinate. So this is asking you where is the y coordinate 1 that occurs at pi over 2. And the sine is 0 at 0 degrees. So your final answer here is pi over 2.